what you know about mixture of experts is wrong. We are not using this technique because each model is an expert on a specific topic. In fact, each of these so-called experts is not an individual model, but something much simpler. We can now assume that the rumor of GPT-4 having 1.8 trillion parameters is true. The latest the state-of-the-art OpenAI model is approximately 1.8 trillion parameters. 1.8 trillion is 1,800 billion, which is 1.8 million million. If you could find someone to process each of these parameters in one second, which would basically be to ask you to do a complex multiplication with values like these each second, it would take the person 57,000 years. Again, assuming you can do that in one second. If we all do this together, calculating one parameter per second with 8 billion people on Earth, we could achieve this in 2.6 days. Yet, transformer models do this in milliseconds. This is thanks to a lot of engineering, including what we call a mixture of experts. Unfortunately, we don't have much detail on GPT-4 and how OpenAI built it, but we can dive more into a very similar and nearly as powerful model by Mistral called Mistral 8x7b. By the way, if you don't know about Mistral yet, you should definitely consider following their work. Mistral is a French startup building state-of-the-art language models, and they are quite promising and actually quite open to sharing their advances compared to some other well-known companies. And I'm not even sponsored by them. And if keeping up with all those different companies and research seems hard, well, you can easily do that staying up to date with all these new advancements by subscribing to the channel or my newsletter linked below. But what exactly is a mixture of experts? As I said, it's not multiple experts as most people say. Even though the model is called Mixtral 8x7b, it doesn't mean 8 times a 7 billion parameter model. And likewise for GPT-4. Even though we assume it has 1.8 trillion parameters, which has never been actually confirmed by OpenAI, there are no 8 experts of 225 billion parameters. It's actually all just a single model. To better understand that, we need to go into what makes transformer models work. Even though you've probably seen this image a lot, what we actually use is something much more like this, a decoder-only transformer. This means that the model tries to predict the next token or next word of a sentence you send as the input prompt. It does that word by word or token by token to construct a sentence that statistically makes sense the most based on what it has seen during its training. Now, let's dive into the most important parts. First, obviously, you'll have your text and need to get your embeddings, which are just numbers that the model can understand. You can see this as a large list of around a thousand values representing various attributes about what your input sentence or word means. One could be how big it is, and the other could be its color, another could be if it can be eaten or not. Just various attributes that the embedding model learns by itself to represent our world with just one or two thousand numerical values. This is done for each token, which is a piece of text, part of code, part of an image or whatever, transformed into this list of numbers. But this information is just numbers in a large list. We just lost all our contextual information, we just have a bunch of words represented in numbers. So we need to add some positional information. Basically, just syntactic information to help better understand the sentence or text sent showing globally and locally where each word is. So each token ends up being represented by even more values inside the network. It's really not that efficient compared to directly understanding language. In the Mixtral case, each list of the tokens has 4096 values. It's already quite big, and we send many of those at the same time. We now have all our text correctly represented into many lists of these 4000 numbers. Now, what does a model like GPT-4, or Mixtral in this case, do with all that? It does two things, understands it, and then repeat this process many times. And it's all done inside one essential part, the transformer block, which was introduced in the famous paper, Attention is all you need. Inside this block, we have the two crucial components of all those models like GPT-4, Gemini, or Mixtral, an attention step and a feed-forward step. Both have their respective role. The attention mechanism is used to understand the context of the input tokens, how they fit together, understand what's all that. Simply put, 
we have our many tokens that each are a list of these 4000 numbers already. The attention mechanism transforms our list of numbers by basically merging parts of all our current lists together and learning the best combination possible to understand it. You can see this as reorganizing the information so that it makes sense for its own brain, if we can call this a brain. What the model learns when we say it is training is where to put which numbers for the next step, giving less importance to the useless tokens and more to useful ones. Just like when meeting a new person, you'd ideally give more importance to their own name and less on what they said first, whether it was hi, welcome or hello. Remembering the names is more important than which synonym they used, even though my own brain doesn't agree. Here, attention does the same, simply learning what to give more importance to through many examples, which is basically through seeing the whole internet. This attention mechanism has made a lot of noise since the paper Attention is all you need in 2017, and for a good reason. You basically only need this to understand context. Still, you need something else to end up with those huge powerful models of billions and trillions of parameters. These transformer models are that big because they do one thing, they stack these transformer blocks one on top of the other. But right now, what we've seen is an attention step blending content into a new form. It helps for understanding the context, but now we lost our knowledge for each token themselves. To fix for that, we need some kind of function that can process each of these new transformed token to help the model better understand the specific part of the information, the local information. This is called a feedforward network or multiple layer perception. It's the same thing but the name isn't important. What's important is that it uses the same function or network that is similar to attention, but for one specific token individually to go through all tokens one by one to understand it and transform it for the next step. Here, by next step, I mean going deeper into the network, going to the next transformer block, processing the information further and further. Basically, we mean to send it into the next attention layer. It's just like what our brain does with information entering our ear or eyes until it gets understood and we generate an answer, whether it be answering or acting. We process information and transform it into a new form. Transformers do the same. Fortunately, we don't have to wait for each token to be processed one by one. We can do that in parallel. Still, it becomes a big compute bottleneck because we need to work with large amounts of numbers in parallel. This is where the mixture of experts, and even more specifically, the sparse mixture of experts, comes in. Our experts here are basically different feedforward networks instead of just one. That's it. This means they can be smaller and more efficient feedforward layers and run on different GPUs in parallel, yet have even more parameters in total. In the mixture case, it's eight feedforward layer. So it even allows for the eight experts to learn different things and complement each other only benefits. As I said in the case of Mixtral, to make it work, we simply add yet another mini network called a router or gating network, where its only job is to learn which expert it should send each token. So a mixture of experts layer replaces only our feedforward layer by eight of them. This is why it's not really eight models, but rather eight times this specific part of the transformer architecture. And this is all to make it more efficient. One last part I mentioned is that we use sparse mixture of experts. Being sparse just means that most values processed are set to zero so that we can reduce the computation. In this case, Mistral decided to go with using only two experts out of the eight for each token. They determined through experimentation that this was the best combination for results and efficiency. So the router basically sends each token to two experts and recombine everything right after. Again, simply to make things more efficient. I want to share a great analogy for understanding this process from Gregory Z on Medium. Consider a hospital with various specialized departments, which are our experts. Each patient, or here input token, is directed to the appropriate department by the reception, which is our router or gating network, based on their symptoms, which are our list of numbers. Just as not all departments are involved in treating every patient, not all experts of a mixture of experts are used for every input. That's it. We simply stack these transformer blocks together and we end up with a trillion parameter super powerful model called GPT-4. Or Mixtral 8 times 7 b in this case. And here, the real number of parameters isn't 8 times 7 or 56 billion parameters. It's actually smaller, around 47 billion, since it's only a part of the network that has these multiple experts as we've seen. 
and also we only need two experts at a time for a token transformation, leading to around 13 billion active parameter when we actually use it at inference time. So around a quarter of the total count only. Now, why did I start the video saying they were not really experts? Because these 8 experts actually are no expert at all. Mistral studied them and concluded that the router sending the tokens to these quote-unquote experts did that pretty randomly, or at least with no observable pattern. Here, we see our 8 experts and 8 kind of data, whether it be code, mathematics, different languages, etc., and they are, unfortunately, clearly randomly distributed. No expert focused on math or on code. They all helped a bit for everything. So adding those quote-unquote experts help, but not in the expected way. It helps because there are more parameters and we can use them more efficiently. The interesting thing they found is that the same expert seemed to be used when starting a new line generation. Which is quite interesting, but not that useful as a conclusion for an analysis. By the way, the mixture of expert approach is nothing new, as with most techniques we do in AI. This one comes from a while ago. For instance, this is a 2013 paper with an author you should recognize involved at OpenAI, which developed on the existing ID of mixture of experts working with such a gating mechanism. We just took this ID to transformers and scaled things up as we always do. And voila. Of course, the overall transformer architecture contains many more important components and is a bit more complicated than what I showed here, but I hope that this mixture of expert thing is a bit more clear now and that it broke some beliefs about those being real experts and I especially hope to not see yet another quick calculation multiplying 8 by 7 to find out the total amount of parameters for a model. Thank you for watching the whole video and I will see you in the next one with more AI Explained.